I'm getting ready to pack my plein air bag to go plein air painting tomorrow with the chestnut group at Harlansdale Farm. And I thought I'd go ahead and shoot a video to show you what all I'm packing. Now, I normally keep my plein air um, bag packed at all times. But the thing is, sometimes you add things to it and uh, or you run out of something and forget to replace it when you get home. And the bag is heavy enough as it is. So I decided to just unpack the bag, make sure I had everything I needed, and then um, repack the bag. And another reason why I need to repack it is I think I had it originally packed for oil painting. And I think I'm going to take my um, water-soluble oils tomorrow. I really prefer to paint in acrylics because they're so much easier to clean up with. But um, And I might even pack... Uh, a burnt sienna acrylic for the underpainting. I'm not sure yet, but that I haven't pulled that out. That would be the only thing I might add after I call through all this stuff. So if you're not familiar with plein air painting, it basically just means painting outside. It's a fancy French term for painting outside, much like Monet and the French Impressionists. Now we pronounce it here in the U.S. as plein air, like a, like a seeing plain and clear, plain air. Uh, in France, they pronounce it plan, plan air. Um, I've even heard some people call it plein air, but uh, that's very rare to hear that. It's usually plain air or plan air. Uh, so anyway, that's what we're doing. And it's lots of fun. I will admit I'm a plain, I'm a fair weather plein air painter. Um, I don't want to paint in the snow. I don't want to paint in the rain. Um, I really don't like it to be 100 degrees outside, but that might be what we have tomorrow. So um, I can I can deal with the heat. It's just the rain and the snow that I'm, I'm not happy about. But what I normally do uh, when I'm plein air painting is I take a lot of reference photos uh, because you don't have to finish your painting outside. You just kind of grab those uh, important pieces of information from the scene. Uh, now, many times I do go ahead and finish the painting outside, but a lot of times I'll bring it back to the studio and finish it, or I'll bring it back to the studio and paint a bigger version. Um, in plein air, we typically paint a relatively small. Um, my easel only holds um, panels. It doesn't hold uh, stretched canvas at all. And I typically paint uh, 9 by 12 In fact, I buy 9 by 12 panels by the gross. Um, you just want to have a, a bunch of those at the ready and there's another reason why I use that that particular size and I'll show you here in a minute. So what we've got here first is um, my Pashad box. This is basically the box that I use to paint with and um, I added a handle to it because it is, I meant to measure this, I think it's 12 by 18, and then it has these two little extension things that hold it on the, um, the, uh, the tripod, and because of these, they don't fit into my backpack, and I have tried every backpack possible to uh, get one big enough to fit, and they just don't make them that big. And so what I did is I added a handle on here, so that I have a backpack on my back. I have a tripod in a bag over one shoulder. I have a purse over the other shoulder and I have this in my hand and usually a beverage in the other hand. So you will feel like a beast of burden when you plein air paint. Um, which reminds me, there are times when I pack my car and just pop the, the, um, the hatch and paint out of the back of the car as if that's a huge tabaret. Now what a tabaret is, it's just a table that you have beside your easel to hold, um, you know, any accoutrements that you might need to paint with. Now this just has a hook on it, and I did have to take the hook off and spin it over so that when I'm walking, the hook is facing down, and so gravity keeps that from opening up. When I purchased this, and this is a Coulter system, when I purchased it, it went the other way around, but I couldn't add the handle on this side or it wouldn't fit with the, um, the tripod. So when I open this, it makes a nice large space on which to mix color. Now, you might wanna be um, careful when you order your own 
I had originally ordered this for a studio easel and that's why I wanted all that ma ma uh, mixing room. If I had got a smaller box, it would have been lighter weight and it would have fit into my backpack. So I can't remember if this is a large or an extra large, but it's a Coulter design easel. And I'll see if I can't find the website to that to put in the notes. But what I like is when you open it, it creates little shelves on both sides. So it has a little built-in tabaret. Now the other thing I just noticed is I did have a piece of glass cut to put in here. And um, I even painted the glass a medium gray on the other side, and that helps me with my values. The only thing is that glass adds weight. And so many times, if I know I'm gonna be hiking somewhere carrying all this, I will leave the glass at home and just paint right on the wood underneath. Just use the wood underneath as my palette. But when I do that, I have to put oil down um, because I, Eventually, if you put enough oil down, it seasons the wood, but because I normally use the glass, the wood's not as seasoned as it needs to be. The other thing is, a lot of time when I'm painting in acrylics, I don't use this at all. In fact, um, I'll use just a, um, a styrofoam plate or something that's disposable to put my paint on and then just use this as a table. So that is my, what's called, pochade. And again, modified it with a little handle. And it fits on this. In fact, I need to go. And this will have, let me see here. This has, this is your um, tripod, and there is an arm that goes like this, and then you can tighten these little things. And they will hold your canvas panel right in here. And so when you open this up, you can add your box here. And the weight of the box and gravity will hold that pochade in place. And then you've got this this way. Now, if you like to sit down when you paint, and I don't when I'm out plain air painting, um, I'll take, uh, if you need to, you need to take a stool in order to sit on. And if you do that, you want to raise this bar up. And then you spin this around to where this is really tall. And then your bar is coming down. And then it's basically right in front of you. So you can sit down and, um, and paint using this same easel. So now I've got to figure out how to get this packed. So this will go into the side pocket of my... Uh, backpack because it won't fit in the backpack and have the backpack closed so it has to go on the side. Meanwhile I have to get this as small as I can possibly get it to get it into the bag. And the tripod comes with the um, easel if you buy it from uh, Coulter. And the tripod part of it is called a Slick, S-L-I-K. But if he sells it all as a, as a system. So you don't just buy bits and parts. You, you just order the whole thing. Now, I originally had purchased this. And apparently I didn't get it small enough. Originally, I had purchased this to be my um, studio easel because I was using a French box as my plein air easel. And the French box is, has been, has been um, relegated to basically 
loaning out to friends who want to go plein air paint because I don't really like it. Um, I like the way it looks. It looks like Monet painting um, in plein air in France in the late 1800s. It, it, it's what your brain thinks of when you think of a plein air painter. But it's very heavy. It is wood. It has this little drawer that doesn't hold near enough of what you need to carry with you. So you're going to have to take a backpack anyway. And then the legs are all spindly and, oh, it's like a tarantula trying to get the thing opened up and, and um, situated. It takes probably three or four times longer to set up a French box or a half box as it does one of these. So instead of using this as my studio easel, this is now my plain air and studio easel. And so see, it zips right up. And then that can just go over the shoulder. So we have our fashad, we've got our um, tripod, we've got our arm that's going to go here on the side. Now I have to pack canvas. And I like having a variety of canvas, but I don't want to have to carry all this canvas. I can put some in the car and then that way if I make a decision that I want to go smaller I can but I normally work 9 by 12 and there's a really good reason for that and that is I have a wet canvas carrier that is made by Raymar that only holds 9 by 12. And I don't know if you can see in there, but it's almost like a pizza oven where you slide your painting in and it will hold one, two, three paintings. Although I think they advertise that it will hold seven because they're expecting you to put a wet painting up against another wet painting back to back and slide it into one spot. I'm too messy for that. I know that. I can't do that. So I, um, I just put one or two wet paintings in here to be able to carry them but honestly a clean pizza box will work perfectly well in fact if you do use the pizza box you might even want to put in some masking tape so you can put a little tape on the bottom of it so it doesn't slide around and then that way you can get two paintings in one pizza box so this is my wet canvas carrier again a lot of stuff goes over the shoulder and then I have to pack my canvas so I'm only going to put in two 9 by 12s and then I may put the others in the car. In addition, I have water soluble oils that go in this big gallon size um, Ziploc bag. And I use a lot of Ziploc bags because I don't want to just throw my oils in there and give them the opportunity to um, mess up anything else in the bag. In fact, I just single bagged this, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to double bag this. You just never know what's going to happen. So then I have my paint. And with the paint... You need your brushes so this is my brush carrier but I have in here more than just brushes it's like a flat bag with little seams where the brushes can fit in there and so I've got a variety of brushes in here um, and I also carry some pliers because sometimes you need help getting those um, uh, paint tubes open if they're stuck and then I also have a variety of, this is called an Angle Chisel Soft Color Shaper. And it's a rubber tipped um, instrument that will help me scrape the paint off if I ever get a value that's wrong or a, or a shape that needs to be reshaped. But what I like about this one is this real sharp edge. You can just sign your name in that wet paint and it looks like you're using a ballpoint pen. I mean, it looks like your real signature. And if you've ever tried to paint your signature, you know that takes practice. 
and you want to paint your signature as small as possible and still be legible. Um, and this is just does the trick with oil paint or with um, water soluble oils. It does not work with acrylics at all. So I've got those in there and then I've got a variety of palette knives, different sizes and different shapes. So how that works is you fold that over like that and then you roll it up like so and then just tie it into a bow. So the plan is to paint with water soluble oils. So I'm going to pack a washer cup and just put my brushes right in there and pack those in the um, uh, backpack. But normally when I'm painting with regular oils, I have to take Gamsol or um, turpentine or some sort of mineral spirits. And if you're going to do that, you're going to want one of these. It's a canister that's got three prongs on it. And those three prongs help the uh, lid stay on. Otherwise, the other canister that I have seen is smaller than this and has two prongs. And that lid just pops right off. So you want to get one with at least three prongs. Or you can get a glass jar that has a very good tight lid that you can screw on. Now, in addition to this, I also have a clear kitchen canister that has a seal around the top and another prong that holds that down and I just drop this in there and then seal the clear canister in um, with this inside and then that way I'm doubly sure that that turpentine is not going to leak. Now you cannot travel on an airplane with any kind of mineral spirits. You're going to have to purchase that wherever you're going and if they don't have it where you're going then you have to purchase it online and have it shipped there. You cannot you cannot carry it on a plane. You cannot um, pack it in a checked bag. Uh, but with water soluble oils you just have water and it's so much easier and also when I work with turpentine I typically just use paper towels to pull the paint out of the paintbrush because when you put the turp on there it makes the paint really loose and runny and you can get really muddy colors but when you're working with water soluble oils you've got as much water as you need and you can you know clean your brushes you can throw that water out get more water and just keep cleaning the brushes in between colors if you need to so um, that's the turp I also want to pack paper towels and I'm actually taking two tomorrow because this one is so near the end of the roll but can you see how I've got a bungee cord in here and the bungee cord has these little um, hooks on the end so when I set up my pochade box this is going to hook on the edges so my paper towels will hang in front of me so that um, will get packed and then we also have to take just plastic bags to put our trash in. And here, actually this plastic bag is broken. So we'll throw that one away and I'll get some more. And I like just these little bags because you can tie them onto the end of your easel and then you just got a nice little trash bag right there and then the whole thing's disposable and you can throw it away. So we have to have that. Also tomorrow, I'm going to take a bunch of these disposable um, gloves and you can get these at uh, your DIY shop. I think you can get them at your discount stores like Walmart and Target. But I'm going to just put a bunch of them in a plastic bag. And the reason why I do that is because that is so much easier to pack than a hard box full of these things and they come with a hundred gloves. I don't need a hundred gloves tomorrow. So I think I'm packing six and that's probably four too many. But at least I've got some gloves and some to share if we need to. Also tomorrow I'm going to need a notebook, a pencil, and then a variety of 
markers and the markers that I'm using come in black and this is a um, Copic sketch marker so I've got black and then I also have this medium gray you might notice that one of my little foster dogs thought it was a chew bone and I also have um, actually I have another gray marker I'm gonna leave that because I don't need it and then this is just a little pen and I will use that so I usually um, put a rubber band around all these just so they stay together otherwise they can get lost oops that one broke I'll get another rubber band for that and when I go to paint in plain air I usually take a photo of the composition that I want to paint and then I run it through an app called C value and try to distinguish where are my four or less basic shapes and I learned this from Ann Blair Brown and to be honest I think she's taught it for at least 10 years I just didn't get it and the last time I took a workshop from her it just the light bulb went off and I finally understood so when you're looking at a composition you want to try to um, whittle it down into four or less bold shapes of varying values and no more than four values in fact probably three is all you need three values and that's one thing that I've done this is one with roses now this sketch is interesting because it starts out with the gesture drawing and then the contour drawing and then the no tan and the no tan basically is just showing where the lights are and the darks are the contour kind of gives you the basic three shapes and the gesture just gives you a real quick sketch of what that composition is going to look like and I've got several of these in here um, this is where I started doing the gesture in landscape position and then in portrait position and then I went back with the no tan and the three value I did a two two value is no tan and three value is the uh, the value study so we try to work it out real quickly on these note um, notebooks with pens and then that way it saves you time and also it kind of gives you your brain a more um, clear roadmap of what you're going to paint so that is uh, necessary now this is controversial but I will be taking sunglasses and um, I didn't I need to go grab a hat too um, I will take a hat and I'll take sunglasses now a lot of times I'll have to take the sunglasses off to see the color and to mix the color but that Sun can be brutal especially if you're painting where there's a lot of reflective surfaces the beach uh, in snow um, just on a clear bright day it just hurts if I don't wear sunglasses so even though I don't wear them the whole time I want to make sure I've got them because it, you just don't want to not have it you have to have a hat though especially one with a nice uh, large uh, brim so that it will shield you to protect those eyes because uh, the Sun is just so bright and um, you want to see the color clearly but you don't want to um, you know be in pain while you're doing that I'm also going to uh, this is a phone charger and I'm gonna go ahead and charge it up and pack it because I do use my phone not only for videotaping and taking photos of the painting as it progresses but tomorrow uh, the chestnut group who I'll be painting with at Harlansdale Farm is being interviewed and filmed for an episode of Tennessee Crossroads and I thought it would be fun to do some uh, videotape there to show some behind the scenes of what goes on now I'm terrified I don't want to be on TV um, I'm hoping to be lost in the crowd as far as painting is concerned but I would love to sneak around and, and get some video to, to share and since my phone is old and the and the battery runs down real quickly we got to have a we got to have a backup I also have a plug-in backup for that same phone uh, which is not always easy to find when you're outside 
uh, painting. Now I do have one that goes into the car, but a lot of times we'll take a break and either go get lunch or go get something to drink and then you can plug it in at a restaurant or at a store for a few minutes and that's why I keep that. It's amazing how accommodating people are when you are low on juice in your phone. Um, I also am gonna pack some Carmax lip balm. Um, when you're out in the open air, I mean, I get in the zone painting and five hours can go by. It has happened before. Um, I'm hoping I don't do that tomorrow because you'll get sunburned and eaten up and, and uh, the lips get really chapped. But um, two hours can easily go by in, in a second when you're out there painting. So you want to have some good lip balm. You want to have some bug spray. This is very important. And a lot of times I'll spray the ground where I'm going to be standing as well as spraying myself because um, I just don't want to get chewed up. And then I also have two different um, sunscreens here. I'm not going to take both of them. They both were in my bag. That's an example of how things just seem to accumulate in there. I'm probably going to take the um, SPF 30 and because uh, it's a spray on and that'll be a whole lot easier than this other one um neosporin on the go it comes in handy just it's so little it's so lightweight i just go ahead and add that tide on the go also comes in handy because even though you're going to wear an apron you might get paint on something it's just nice to have that but we do want to pack our apron and you don't want it to be a white apron in fact I'm wearing a white t-shirt right now and I might wear a white t-shirt tomorrow just because it is cooler but that white and even any color you're wearing could reflect off of your canvas and so you want to wear uh, dull muted colors but no nothing bright and nothing white and then my um, apron is is a very faded black but then that kind of helps um, keep that light from bouncing around now this is interesting these are um, these are just things I use to move paint around these are uh, um, makeup or cosmetic sponges i don't use these as much i think i went to a workshop and they recommended these and they just don't really fit into what i do but i do have them they're very lightweight so if there's room in the bag we can add that this i always take and even though it um it's not really a palette knife it's more of a putty knife i think but i use it to scrape off the paint off of my palette because sometimes I run out of room or it dries or whatever and I just want to start over and it be clean and so I use this to um, clean that up. Now this is a knockdown knife and this is a brayer. This has a roller to it. It's, it's a like a printing sort of tool and I'm not even sure what the knockdown knife is for. Um, this came from Lowe's or Home Depot this I purchased online but what I do with these is lightly go across my canvas after I've painted the background and kind of blend those edges blur those edges when you have um, blurred edges it gives the impression of expanse and it also gives your viewer the impression of that's the background uh, this is not the center of focus when you are painting and you want your viewer to look at something you want that to be the center of focus it needs to have sharper edges more chroma um, your lightest light your darkest dark but everything else needs to be out of focus your eye cannot focus on everything in its field of vision cameras can so when you look at a photograph the entire photograph many times is in perfect clear focus and that's the difference between painting and photography is you want that painting to be the impression of what you see and what you see cannot all be in complete focus so these tools will help you um, kind of 
soften all that. I really love the brayer, but it's heavier. So I'm thinking about leaving it in the studio at home and just taking the knockdown knife tomorrow. I am going to take tape. It comes in handy for all kinds of stuff. So we'll add that to the box. Um, baby wipes always help trying to get cleaned up afterwards. Now this is really nice. It's Murphy's Oil Soap Soft Wipes. And I like these when I'm painting in oils because it cleans up the oil better. But because this is water soluble oil, the baby wipes are fine. But if I was working in traditional oils, I would want to take that. Um, this is Galkid Light. This is a medium that you add your oils to help it dry quicker because oils can take weeks, months to dry. Um, and so this will make it dry a lot quicker. But I'm not using regular oil, so we will leave that at home tomorrow. This is linseed oil, and it's a medium to help uh, take your paint from a thick paste to a buttery, creamy consistency. And again, I'm using water-soluble oils. All I have to do is add a little water to it. This will be staying at home tomorrow. Now, this is interesting. Um, it's actually a purse atomizer for perfume, but the perfume's long gone. And in it, I've got half Gamsol and half linseed oil and shake it up really good. And so if I'm using traditional oils, I can just spritz this on there and get them more buttery and more creamy to use. Um, sometimes they're really stiff and they don't go on smoothly and you have to add something to it. But you don't want to add a lot because the more oil you add, the longer it's going to take for that to dry. So this little spritzer really helps. Now what I will take tomorrow is this spritzer which is found in the travel aisle of the uh, sundries and, and pharmacy at most stores and you buy them for about a dollar or less and I've just got it filled with water and then that way if my water soluble oils look like they're drying or they need to um, flow smoother then you can just spritz them and then that's fine. Uh, this is interesting it's called brush cleaner and preserver it's this pink stuff oh this is not even pink I've got pink soap and I thought this was pink too but this one's a little different but this will help clean the brushes when I'm done because you want that really really clean you don't want any kind of paint to dry in the brushes because it will ruin absolutely ruin your brushes and the only thing I have left is water. I don't know if you can see that huge thing of water back there. Um, that's probably going to stay in the back of the car. If I have some smaller bottles of water, then that can go in the backpack. But I think that will work. Um, I am going to take a, um, uh, a cooler with ice water in it to drink. If I'm going to be outside for five hours, I want to make sure I've got plenty of beverages. And I might even take some snacks. And also that hat. You just really have got to have a hat. I don't need to, to express, you know, express that enough. Um, I can't believe I didn't pull one out to, uh, to show you, but I have several uh, depending on the type of weather, whether it's uh, cold weather or uh, warm weather. And again, the longer the brim, the better. So I'll write all this up in a list. So if you want to go plein air painting, you can just follow that list and pack your own bag. And I'll also work on a video tomorrow from Harlandsdale. It is a historic farm in Franklin, Tennessee, where I grew up. It's just one county north of here and where my parents still live. In fact, it's basically walking distance to where my parents live. And um, it, it's not, I, I, don't, I don't know the whole history of Harlandsdale Farm. It's so close to downtown Franklin. I'm sure it's been a farm for hundreds of years. But um, as far as I could find uh, of the written history on it, it's a century farm that it came into a family in the early 1900s. And then in 1933, 35, somewhere along there, Mr. Harlan, W.W. Harlan, purchased it. And instead of uh, farming agriculture, crops, whatever, he had Tennessee walking horses. 
In fact, his um, walking horse, Midnight to Sun, was the world grand champion two years in a row, 1945 and 1946. And most farms have grand houses and then the barns and the stables and everything is somewhere else on the farm. Uh, Mr. Harlan liked to put his uh, his stables front and center. They're as pretty as the house. But I'll show you all those pictures when I get those and maybe even try to come up with a pretty painting to share with you as well. And then I also want you to um, come up with your own paintings and please share them with me. I'd love to see them. So on social media, just tag me in there on uh, Facebook or on Instagram. And if you like these videos, I appreciate it so much. Uh, just subscribe to my channel, please, and we'll make some more. Music